then we head to the route. After Arusha, I mean, we are in the, still in Arusha town. When we get to the suburbs of Arusha, we go to Wameru. Wameru is the tribe living along the slopes of Mount Meru. They are named after the mountain. Actually, they are the ones who named the mountain. Nobody knows the name of the mountain before the Wameru tribe. They are mostly farmers. The Maasai are pastoralists. And they do, yeah. Just so camera. Please don't hang your camera out. Just for safety. You can film from inside. So nobody, so nobody driving uh, by with a, a bike and uh, snatch it, right? Uh, that's why we say it's for safety. We don't want something to happen because let you know that there is always first time. In every, even if there's nothing that ever happened, there is first time. The green plants you see coming on the backyard, those are banana trees. Uh, a nice plush and green family, green life. So, Wameru, they, they grow a lot of coffee, they grow a lot of corn. They are the big producer of tomato. The reason that they are the first and big producers of tomatoes is that they are living uphill. The soil is very, very fertile from volcanic uh, ashes. It's got a lot of minerals and they have lots of water throughout the year. So they grow a lot of tomatoes for neighborhood and some very few times in the year when it's a very dry, dry, dry. Some of the tomatoes will be from here to Dar es Salaam and to the big industries in Kenya. Unfortunately, we sell trucks of tomatoes to Kenya and then we buy bottles of tomato sauce from Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> we need the factories here and make the tomato sauce. They are, they are, the government, current government is really encouraging people to, to manufacture. That's something we could do. But, uh, well, the problem is if we build factories here, the factories in Kenya will be in trouble. Since, wow. since right. the land in Kenya belongs to people, the land in Tanzania belongs to the government. Oh, okay. wow. So I have a right to do my life anywhere I want, as long as I'm not on top of somebody's land. Okay. So you can fence your portion of land, the rest is not yours. So if you stop the production or we stop export of tomatoes, pineapples, then somebody will be in trouble. So it's kind of Balancing the equation that uh, we grow and we sell to Kenya. We have a lot of kettles we sell to Kenya. They process it. Some comes back here, some goes to uh, United Emirates. So by that, we also keep a good friendship with our neighbors like Kenya because they need us for production. We need them for manufacturing. manufacturing. <laughs> It's another African country. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, 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 like we, in, in, we, in, along the Usambara mountains going to Dar es Salaam, we have a huge deposit of uh, lime, which they use it for gypsum, for production of cement, which is the biggest in East Africa. We don't have capacity to use all of that. Uh, since 2007, Kenya has been our best buyer. So they buy, they cross to Mombasa, and from Mombasa goes to the uh, big uh, factories. They produce uh, gypsum for sealing. They produce cement. Some of that cement comes back to Tanzania, although we have lots of cement. We have sufficient supply of cement. But when it's like fixing of the factory, there's something goes wrong, then we get cement from Kenya. Well. It's not that we are only depending in terms of production or manufacturing, we are depending on Kenya, but we have the textile companies that we do a lot of cotton, like what the ladies were wearing. We call it kanga. So we, we buy cotton from our neighbors. We make those pieces of cloth and sell to them. So still we have something to do. It makes it, it make it seem. It always makes it seem like after that manufacturing, yeah, you know, it's it coming from other European, from European countries. The clothing. The, the, the thing is, getting it from European, European Union, European countries, China, the production is very. Yeah, yeah. 
those countries. But here, the first, the production is expensive because all the machines we have to import them. So it takes time until those things have been paid back, and then we start chip production. Anyway, technology started somewhere in America, Canada, and then Europe. And then from Europe went to Japan, and from Japan to China, from China to Thailand, from Thailand to India. Where is next? They have nowhere else to take it, whether they like or not, here. So by the time <laughs> India doesn't need the technology they have now, they want something more, they want to build big factories for producing Tata the vehicles, trucks. They have to bring, bring it here. And there's no way they take it out to stay here. By then, our people will learn how to produce things. And then nobody will want to be dominant. Nobody will want to stick with the technology. We want the modern technology. Then we will modify by ourselves. So it's just a matter of time. As you say, time will tell. And we say time doesn't lie. So we're looking a number of years ahead that technology will get here. Today is Sunday. It's very quiet, you don't see a lot of people, but you see the people are coming back from Sunday service with the Bible, yeah, yes. dressed up. Yeah. Sundays are the days that people dressed up very well. Absolutely, get your hallelujah on. Uh, we were talking a little bit of the religion yesterday, and I have been discussing with a few of you in the lobby. In Tanzania, we have three really good religions. The local belief, that depends on the tribe, which is very strong, Christianity, and Muslims. Islam, all right, got you. We don't talk of our religion, because normally people say, your religion is my religion. We have some, most of the time, like 90% family with three different religions. Who can be known by the Christian as non-believers, but I don't believe that they believe in something that we call the local beliefs. And then Christian and then Muslims. Like uh, my father married to a Catholic woman, who is my mother. My young brother Eugene is Evangelical Lutheran Church, Protestant. His wife is Catholic. Brother of my mother, who I call him uncle. It's different of how you it is Muslim my mother-in-law the mother of my wife well now she changed to Christian to become a Christian but she was Muslim so we always celebrate together if it's time for the Muslim to celebrate they invite us we go and celebrate it comes to Christmas time is our time after Ramadan and everything we invite them, we come, and they know the schedule. Now we're heading to Easter. Before Easter, the great most of few Christians are fasting. They will join you. Uh, and if you want people to like not talk to you, isolate you, try to bring up the issues of religion. Nobody wants, and uh, that's why we have this saying: "Your religion is my religion." Anyway. Lots of people now are going back to the traditional belief. And it's getting very, very strong. My own father is the one who raised us. My mother passed away like 24 years ago. He used to be a very good Christian, but now not anymore. Because after all those years he's become a Christian, he has learned a lot of weaknesses. I grew up. I grew up in, in a small village of Karatu, where Eugene grew up also. There, when I was a young boy, you can leave your house door open. You can go for a, to the market. You can enjoy your life and come home. Everything is safe. With the other religion today, you cannot do it because somebody will break it. Because in our, my tribe, our God is Sun. 
when the sun comes up, the God is up. When the sun goes down, the, the day is over, the God is sleeping. So we wait for early in the morning before the sunrise to tell the God our needs. And when it comes to 6.30, if the sun down, the normally difference of five minutes, you go up the hill or if you're, if you're in a flat land, you wait for the sun to go down and thanks God for everything that happened in that day, the day is closed. So if in case you break into somebody's house, the elders of the clan, the elders of the community, the elders of the village will wait for the sunrise and they will talk to God and tell him what they want, exactly what they want to happen to the thief before the sunset. The result is there. So nobody wants that to happen. And if you did something like that, or you you did something against the, 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 the roles of the society, you better go to talk to the elders before the midday before it gets too late. Even if you don't go by yourself, you can tell your father that for sure I am the one responsible for this. Then your father will rush to the elders and say, please stop, it's my son, and I'm responsible for it. So it's not your problem, it's not the problem of the son, it's not the problem of the daughter, it's the problem of the parents, because they haven't disciplined you well. So they will deal with that, finish everything, and then get back to normal. Life. So because it's going to be a shame for that family and for yourself, nobody else will do this. Settle. So that's why our lots of our people are going back to our local, our native religion. Um, sorry, I 